on his way. Yes, Bless us here. Bless us. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. You are the potter. And who am I? And I am, I am the clay. To thy will, wow. mold us and make us. To thy will, mold us and make us. Amen. To thy Don't fit this if you don't want that. Amen. Don't fit this if you don't want that. Why?
as we believe that the Lord has done some mighty things this morning. Put your hands together and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we thank you, Lord Jesus. How many of you know that worship changes things? Amen. I know it's oftentimes we come to church looking to get, but this we have to come to church looking to give. Somebody say amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm glad you're here this morning. Amen. If you're on Facebook Live, say, I'm glad that you're worshiping with us. Amen. I pray that you would share our, our service this morning as we get ready to hear what thus saith the Lord. Amen. You've heard the announcements that we're not just a Sunday morning church, or, but we are a church that is active all through the week. Amen. You got two Bible studies, a prayer meeting. Amen. And we're looking to even to expand. Amen. As we can be specific to meet the needs of our people. Understand that we have in our brown bag initiative led by our own minister, John Deloney. Amen. And we're going to be a blessing to our community with food, stuff, and things that they may need. As you know, we are a church that is kingdom-minded, discipleship-oriented, and community-focused. Amen. And we are doing these things here. We're not even, I think, what, just three months old, and we're seeing God do some great things. Amen. Why don't we give a round of applause for the, unto the Lord for Sister Angela that led us in worship, amen. To these fine musicians, amen, who who was able to follow us. Lord have mercy. They probably said, my God, what they going to do now, amen. We thank God for our brother who is doing our screen and our sound. And we thank God for you. Give a round of applause for yourself, amen. Always good to see your family. Amen. As you know, we have been going through our, our sermon series. You know, I got one more announcement. Please forgive me. But we want to support our own minister, John Deloney, who's leading a men's retreat in the second week of November. Right here, right here, right here. So, brothers, why don't you come on out and support um, our minister, our brother. Amen. He has a heart for ministry. Amen. And especially a heart for men. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. So, um, November 13th, right? Amen. So come on out. More information to follow. And uh, we're going to watch God do his thing. Amen. 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 As you know, we have been talking about um, it is transformational. It is transformational. It was a sermon and teaching series um, that is pretty much based on my book, um, a State of Emergency, a clarion call for transformational discipleship. For those who are interested, it is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, and Zulon Press, and you can also get it from us. Amen. But I want to just go on because I believe this has been a very inf you know, transformational and informational and applicational series. And I do believe that it's been a blessing. If you have missed the first part, then I can suggest that you go on our Facebook Live or our YouTube page. Uh, which is called Transformational Flame, and you will be able to see the series. But today, I want to talk about the last part. Lord Jesus, somebody say amen. amen. You know, we have engaged, hallelujah, these past few weeks in a series called uh, It Is Transformational. We talked about It Is Transformational, a new relationship. We talked about It Is Transformational, a new way of um, thinking. We talked about it is transformational, a new way of being. And it was during these discussions that we have been reminded that Christianity is more than a religion, but it's a relationship. Some might say it was a relationship. You see, we were encouraged and, um, and reminded that because of this new relationship, our thinking has to be biblical rather than societal, that our discernment is spirit-led rather than man-led. And because of how we navigate life, uh, we have learned as believers and disciples in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we are going to make decisions that are aligned with God's will, which will prosper us and empower us to have an abundant life. Uh, we were reminded that because of this new relationship, our thinking has not only changed, but our core identity has changed. In other words, we're walking into a new way of being. We are the image of God, and we had have his divine nature living in us through faith in God, through his son. And because we are a new being, that we are putting away what used to be. We are putting away the struggles that used to define us. And we are a new creation. Somebody say, I'm a new creation. Because we are the children of God. Meaning that we have a daddy who loves us in spite of. We have 
a daddy that cares for us in spite of. We have a father in heaven who art in heaven that loves us and takes us to where we have never become because he's taken us from to take us to. Amen. So today we're going to conclude our transformational series with it is transformational, a new way of living. Somebody say it's transformational. Uh, meaning that this relationship, even with our new relationship and with our new thinking and our new way of being, we have to walk out this and make it applicable in how we ought to live this new way out. You got to understand as believers, as disciples, as learners, as adherents, uh, we ought to be different from the old manner of life uh, that is in agreement or conforms or poisoned by the world. But we must foster sanctification. We must foster a holy life that is essential for us uh, and how we ought to live and bear fruit that is reflective of the master living within us. Uh, somebody say it's transformational. Uh, you see, the reason why it is transformational is Apostle seems to give us some understanding in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 19, where the Apostle Paul prays that God will give Christians a spirit of wisdom and revelation to know God better. Anybody say, I want to know God better. You, you see, Paul is praying for transformation, a matter of fact, a metamorphosis of the individual to be utterly different from the world around him and from what they had previously been before. Because we understand this, that the more knowledge of Christ grows, our wisdom on how to live this knowledge out grows. Uh, and even more importantly, we know God better. And when we know him better, we will know his will better. And being in his will will make our life better. Somebody say yes. Uh, so transformation must involve how we are to live. Uh, the old ways are to be exchanged for his ways. And through our fear and through our worship and through our reverence for God, we allow the process of holiness uh, to be completed within us. Uh, Paul declares that we have some promises. He is there some promises that are made to us to ensure that we don't have to live in the whole way. Matter of fact, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and 1 says, since we have uh, these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves uh, from every defilement of body and of the spirit, making holiness perfect uh, in the fear of God. In other words, we are called to, to holiness. I said it. Yes, I'm going to say it again. We we are called uh, to holiness. We are called uh, to righteous living. It's not a religious thing or a legalistic thing. It's not just an Old Testament thing, but it's a Christian relationship thing. Uh, it is our thing and how we ought to live and how we ought to fear and how we to reverence God. Uh, somebody say we got some promises, amen? Which means that we have the promise of salvation that is not just for eternal life, uh, but for this life. Uh, for us to live in liberty, for us to be free from bondage and free from shame and free from guilt and free from trying to be perfect in perfectionism. But we are the recipients of the grace, mercy, and favor of God. Somebody say yes. You see 1 Peter chapter 1. Verse 14 to 16 says, Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Lord, have mercy. Instead, he who has called you is holy. Be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am what? For I am holy. Amen. So holiness of sanctification is not a term, but holiness and sanctification is a call. It's a new way of being. It's not just to be called holy, but a new way of living is to walk in our call to holiness. Uh, so many want to be called a minister, and so many people want to be called an apostle and a bishop and a, and a superintendent and a superintendent of the bishop that had a superintendent. But you don't want to be called holy. Amen. Uh, you see, when you are saying it comes from a Hebrew word, I mean a Greek word, John, uh, that says hagios, which means that you are a holy one, uh, that you are a saint. Notice God calls you a saint even when you don't act like one. God calls you holy even when you don't live holy because he wants you to inspire to what he called you before you live it out. Somebody say amen. amen. So holiness is a curse word today. It's obsolete to many because we love the idea of grace covering sin, and yes, it does. Uh, but how many know consequences still have to be paid? Uh, 
Hallelujah. Somebody say consequences. Uh, uh, still has to be paid. There's a bill coming due. Amen. Uh, and when you refuse to live as God calls us to live in order to protect us and not to harm us, uh, we open ourselves up then to attack and consequences. Uh, uh, the attack by a real enemy, which many open the door to when we walk in rebellion instead of repentance. Uh, there are consequences of crossing the boundaries that, that God never meant for us to cross. Uh, we have to deal with the pain, uh, with hurt and shame and guilt uh, when we don't stay in the limits that God placed over our life. Not to harm us, uh, not to restrict us, but to help us uh, and to deliver us. Uh. You see, we got to understand that God has allowed holiness uh, to help us deal with the temptations that put us in a pit uh, that many of us are still trying to climb out of today. Am I talking to somebody here? Amen. Am I just talking to a two? Am I just talking to three? Am I talking to somebody on Facebook Live? Then put some hearts up there. Put some thumbs up. Amen. We're talking about a new way of living because it's transformational. I'm here to declare holiness is your help uh, to keep you from harm. Wow. There was a study that revealed that the lifestyle activities of born-again believers was statistically equivalent to those who did not even proclaim Christ as Lord. Did you hear what I'm saying? In other words, there's not a mark of difference in the lifestyles between believers and those who live according to the world. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. George Barner states this troubling trend. He says, the ultimate aim of belief in Jesus is not simply to possess divergent logical ideas, but to become a transformed person. Even though we rely on Jesus for our eternal destiny, Barna says this, that we are having problems translating these beliefs beyond Sunday morning. And that is a question to us when looking at this statistics. Are we living out our professions and our proclamations and praise of God beyond Sunday morning? In other words, what weight do we carry beyond the shout? What weight do we carry behind a, 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 a dance? What weight are we carrying? How weighty is our witness beyond a doxology and a benediction? Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. It is obvious that the church is faced but for tremendous challenge to make disciples, not just by word, but by deed and by how we live. Amen. Because there are many who are hungry for what's in us, but they want to make sure that what's in us is really true and what is true to us. James chapter 1, verse 21 to 25 declares this. So get rid of all filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has power to save your souls. How many know the word has power to save your souls? But I love what he says in verse 22 and 23. He says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are what? Fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. Uh, so believers or adherents of Christ must be planted in the word. Uh, the word will what? Save our souls. Uh, in order to make disciples and be disciples, we encourage them. Uh, don't just tell people to come to Christ. Uh, just don't tell people to be a disciple, but we got to be a disciple ourselves. Uh, we are encouraged to reproduce what's within us. And, and if you ain't got nothing in you, uh, how are you going to give it to somebody? Somebody else, because nothing from nothing means nothing. Huh? Somebody say we got to reproduce. We got to live uh, this resurrected life out through the Holy Spirit for the world to finally see what Jesus looks like. Huh? Everybody worrying about what color Jesus looked like and where Jesus lived. All they got to do is see you, and you can show them what color Jesus looked like, and you can show them what it looks like when somebody has been transformed and delivered. Huh? And as Sister Danielle said, delivered from a pit. Somebody say amen. amen. Yes, Talk about it. If we don't put our convictions to work, we are only fooling ourselves. Yes. We're making a mockery of our faith. Yes. We're making a mockery of our witness to the world. Right. And if we continue to look like the world, how can we ever mirror Christ to the world? Right. We become hypocrites. Lord have mercy. And how many know that hypocrites have no power and hypocrites have no anointing? All they have is presentation and show. Yeah. Wow. Wow. We fell in love with presentations and show. Uh -huh. 
Amen. But that don't mean there's going to be any transformational power. Come here, Minister John, the seminary student that goes up to the block and goes five days a week to school. The hypocrite in the Greek means uh, to be an actor. That's what it means. Huh? It means that we're so busy being actors that we have not studied our part to be disciples. And how can the world know there's a difference between them and this? Uh, that there's a peace about us that the world does not have. That there's a hope in us that the world has lost. And there's a purpose that's laid out in us that when the world has lost now, lost its way. But because of our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, how many know who is the way we are called? We are commanded to, to reveal the way to the world. And you might say, well, Pastor, how do we do that? It's by how we live. Look at somebody say, it's by how we live. Amen. How we live. Come here, Ephesians. Yes. Chapter 4, verse 20 to 24. It says, this is not the way you learn Christ. Uh -huh. For surely you have heard about him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus. You were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, corrupt and deluded by its lust, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and to clothe yourself with the new self created according to the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. Somebody say holiness. Paul declares if you are looking for truth, truth is what? In Jesus. And you have heard the truth and you have been taught this truth. What are you going to do with this truth? Paul is admonishing the church, the Christian believers who have been transformed by the spirit of God that you've got to live your profession now. This transformation, this sanctification, this being set apart for God in which to do the Holy Spirit that we're dying more to our kind of nature and its lust and we're progressively take on the ethics and nature of the spirit. Notice this doesn't happen happen without the decision. And notice this doesn't happen without effort. Uh, Paul tells them after you have made a decision to know him, uh, after you have made a decision to be acquainted to him, uh, after you have made a decision to be intimate with him, uh, Lord have mercy, to made a decision to have more than a passing knowledge of him, uh, that this knowledge is going to be put to test. Uh, anytime you say you're holy, you're going to have everything unholy up in your grill. Every time you say it, that I'm going to live for God, that somebody on the job. There, there's somebody driving on I-75 and I-678 and all those different things. Uh, there's always going to be somebody that's going to test your profession of who you say Jesus is going to be in your life. Somebody say amen. Uh, am I talking to somebody? The minute you say that I'm not going to be hanging out and, uh, and I'm not going to be smoking and drinking. Uh, I'm going to stop doing those things. Uh, here come Cletus that says the bar is open. Uh, here come Cletus that said I'll pay for the club. Uh, here comes somebody saying uh, when you say I'm going to stop all this sexual immorality. Yes, I said it. Here comes somebody saying they want to read a video at 4 a.m. in the morning. Notice, this doesn't happen without a decision and without effort. In other words, belief or faith has to entail some measurable aspect in your life. You have to have a committed mind that leads to a committed heart that leads to a committed life. Paul says you know better. <laughs> I want to stay there. You know better. You know, me and my wife, we've been doing marriage counseling. I just want a segment on this because I, I, I just have to say it. Amen. We've been doing it for over 20-something years and, wow. and counseling. And, and, and the folk will get up there and say, I, I, I didn't know. We said, you lie. You know you knew. You just didn't want to say it. You knew better. I didn't know it was a duck. Well... It had a orange bill. Huh. Well, I didn't get it then. It floated on water. I didn't get it. I didn't. I didn't see it. It said quack, quack, quack. So you didn't line it up. It float. It got web feet. It got an orange bill. Amen. It said quack, quack, quack. When you said you need some money, it said quack, quack, quack. 
When it said, where are you today? I've been calling you quack, quack, quack. When all your family said, I think it's a duck. Yeah, they say quack, quack, quack. And it's cricket, cricket in here. You saw what it was. You can't use the excuse that you didn't know better. You wanted it and you knew better anyhow. And now, because you got grace, don't think you don't deal with consequences. Uh, consequences. Yes. Consequences. Paul says you know better. You can't say that you did not know. He said you've been taught. You've learned that there's a difference required of you. Now that you know him, and if you know that he's true, then this truth must be a fruit in your life. If you know he's true, how can you confidently declare this if there's no noticeable difference between what's in the world and what's in the church? For it to be true to you, it has to transform you when you come in contact with it. Don't worry about what everybody else doing. What you doing? Yeah. Knowledge has to challenge you to change. That's why we don't want to acknowledge. Uh -huh. Amen. Huh? We want to acknowledge it, but we don't want to gain knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. There's a difference between acknowledging something and gaining something. Yeah. Acknowledging means that you're around it, but gaining knowledge means you do something with it. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? What you do with the truth don't change the fact whether it's true or not, but is it true to you? Yeah. It is transformational. Uh -huh. Paul declares transformation means we are moving from a former state to a new state of ethics. When you get Ephesians, he's, he's talking about putting on a new garment or putting on new clothing. Amen. And a garment is an analogy usually found in scripture that indicates that you got to put on a new attitude, uh -huh. a new mindset, yeah. a new behavior, yeah. and a new nature. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. In other words, you can be dressed up on the outside, but your garments on the inside can be ugly, out of shape, and don't fit. Right. Paul is declaring to his disciples, the children of God, uh, who just know about God, uh, but really knows through the teaching of the apostles and through the Holy Spirit and the word of God uh, that you got to put off uh, or you got to do away with the way that you used to live. Uh, he's saying that you can't have one foot in the world uh, and have one foot in Christ. Amen. Uh, you got to decide uh, which master that you're going to serve. Uh, somebody say amen. Uh, he says you're going to have to put away. You're going to have to crucify. You're going to have to count as dead the former way you used to live. Uh, but the old way of living is corrupted. The old way of living is deluded by lust. And the old way does not want a new way. How many of us want a new way blessing still trying to live in the old way? Uh, uh, transformation is more than just a list of do's and don'ts. Uh, uh, we are great in the church with a list of do's and don'ts. Uh, can't do this and can't do that. And you're still nasty as uh, you can't do this and you can't do that. And still can't forgive nobody. You can't do that and you can't do this. And some of the stuff you say you can't do uh, and some of the things you said that you want to do, uh, you do it on the down low. But uh, because it's not really in you. Uh, it's just some legalistic doctrine that you've been following, but it ain't in your heart. Yes, yes. Yes, I, I'm going to tell it. My wife used to go to a church. Hey, Amen. I'm telling it. I tell all your business because you got on my suit this morning and said it's too summery. You said it was the wrong garment. <laughs> But Minister Veron God said, I got to get it out before the year's up. Hey, Amen. I got to get one more. <laughs> Amen. I wanted to match my mask. Amen. So my wife told me how she went to a place where at one time, I don't know if y'all know, that you couldn't go to the movies. Yeah. If she was a believer. Now, I understand the premise. You got to you gotta watch what you put in your spirit. You got to watch what you hear. I do understand that. But they were was, they was so deep. And they said, they said, Minister John, that you can't go to the movie. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So my wife was young then, so that she was rebellious. 
Well, you're still young, baby. Yeah, you're still young. Let me clear it up. Let me clean it up. Amen. Y'all be wondering where Pastor is or why he wears shades. But I'm. Said it's the glory of the Lord. It blinded me. No, it was that fist. <laughs> I'm trying to help you because I know some of y'all getting offended by what I'm saying, so I'm going somewhere. So, so my wife said that she was determined she was going to see this movie. So she said she ain't telling nobody. She's going to go to the movie theater around the way, amen, because ain't nobody coming to that theater. And she's going to go to the matinee, amen. That means that it's early. Ain't nobody going to be in the theater. Amen. So my wife goes and she goes in the theater. She checks around. Ain't nobody in the theater. But she noticed that there was two people in the front. Mm -hmm. And she noticed that from the back of the head, it, this head looks some, some a familiar back of the head that she's seen before. Amen. And so she decided, let me investigate further because I, I believe in my spirit that this head is telling me something about what I heard previously. And But she said what she noticed next to the head was a head that she didn't recognize. And uh, the, the back of the head she recognized was a man. And the head next to her was a woman, and him was a woman. But she recognized the back of the head of the man, but she didn't recognize the back of the head of the woman. So she said, let me investigate. Maybe I can go there and minister. So she creeps down there and she looks and she says, hi, Bishop. Amen. So, so we noticed that there was no more preaching about going to the movies no more, especially when the head next to you wasn't your wife. So be careful. Be careful. Be careful. careful. About a list of doing don'ts. Amen. But the list we need to make is what we put off. Amen. You got to put off things that causes your former life and your lust to want to be fulfilled. And you might have to put off some folk in your life because this garment don't fit me no more. I may have to put off my natural inclination to playing with sin and playing around sin because how many know playing with fire will get yourself burnt? And living close to the edge will cause you to fall off the edge. Paul is letting us know that the transformation has to result in a change of your garments. It's a funeral garment because you put the death what used to define you, but it is a baptismal garment where I recognize that I'm in company with the one that changed me from the inside out and now I'm born again. Somebody say yes. You got to put off those things and stop blaming the devil and stop blaming Cletus and stop blaming Shaquita and them. You got to put it off. You got to make a decision. I don't care if everybody else doing it, but you got to stop doing what is trying to define you and then crying at the altar. Want to be laying down with olive oil that ain't nothing but Goya that we got on sale. Then you got to get your life together. Get it together. Counseling too many Christians, the saints, saints all shouting, screaming, and counting, living broken lives, shacked up and living with folk you ain't supposed to be living with, and getting in relationships you ain't supposed to get in. Oh, I know this ain't, oh, no, oh, Lord, that's all right. Always somebody mad at you and, and you trying to be, I don't know what I did. Listen, you don't get along with your family. You don't get along with the folk on the job. You don't get along on the modern bus or the modern train. You don't get along on Delta Airlines, United Airlines. You don't get along with folk in the church. It's always somebody else's fault. No, it's you. You've been nasty everywhere you go. Amen? Look in the mirror. Look in the word and say, you know what? I got to watch my mouth because some of the things that come out of this mouth, hallelujah, Jesus, transform this mouth. Amen? Help me. And then you can't, you can come to the altar all you want. You got to make a decision to be yielded to the Holy Spirit and shut your mouth when he says, God, don't just sing the song, hush, he's somebody calling my name. You hush, he's calling your name. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, Jesus. We got to renounce some things. We like to declare and decree, but you got to renounce and repent. Amen. 
To renounce means to formally declare one's abandonment of a claim, right, or possession. It means that I have to make a decision. It no longer has a hold on me because Christ got a hold of me. And I will abandon any claim that tries to define me. I will renounce anything that tries to possess me because I don't belong to the old way no more. And I don't, I don't belong to the old man. I'm in the possession of, I got Jesus Christ. And I, I go from renouncing the enemy's hold on me and announcing Jesus Christ's possession of me. Meaning I don't just let it go, but I leave it behind. I know longer hold on to it because it's no longer a part of me. I, I no longer hold on to it because I don't live at that address no more. I return it to sender because what has caused me to slip won't have me slip up no more. I don't live here no more. I have sent it back to the old man because I've changed my address and I changed my garment. This only happens when you allow the Holy Spirit to renew your mind. Amen. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Somebody just put your hands over your head, renew my mind. Renew my mind. I'm getting there. I'm getting there, but I'm not there yet. I'm trying. I'm trying, but I need the help of the Holy Spirit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? All of us know that we got some things that we got to put on the altar. All of us know there's some proclivities that we got to put on the altar. All of us know that we got some habits that got to put on the altar. Lord, renew my mind. Lord, renew my mind. Yes, Lord. A gentleman named Bill Hall makes a statement that I agree with. He said the American gospel has become a set of agreements and doctrinal beliefs uh, where the test of salvation uh, has become doctrinal instead of behavioral. Uh, in other words, we'd like to say the magic words of confession and belief for salvation. Uh, in Romans chapter 10 and 9, uh, if you confess with your mouth uh, and believe uh, in your heart that Jesus uh, was risen from the dead, uh, but we forget how through the Holy Spirit uh, that this confession and belief will show in how you live. Uh, and so many of us are falling in love with the wedding of Jesus, uh, but not living with Jesus after the wedding day of the confession of salvation. Uh, understand that grace is not just for salvation, uh, as found in the Ephesians 2, uh, but for good works that we have created, uh, good works after grace has been received. Uh, he created us for good works with Christ be hard and enduring. Uh, then there has to be a certain expectation. Uh, there has to be a certain conduct uh, after the grace has been received. Uh, there should be some fruit. Uh, there should be some work. Uh, there should be some measurable aspects in my life. Uh, I should not be the same as when Christ saved me. Uh, I should not be the same as Christ delivered me. Uh, there should be something measurable in my life. Uh, I should talk different. I should walk different. I should think different. It should not be the same old thing. And just because we check off the list on the to-do list uh, so that we can get back to watch Sunday night and Monday night uh, and Sunday afternoon football. That ain't going to make you say anything. Uh, but what is Jesus doing in your life on Monday? Uh, when you're driving in the car and Tuesday, when you're going to lunch and Wednesday, when you're at fried green tomatoes uh, and Thursday, when you're at Piccadilly. Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, is anybody going to see Jesus in your life? We're so busy in love with justification, yeah, yeah, yeah. being declared right with God, but we forget sanctification. That's right. That's right. That we are to live right through the help of the Holy Spirit. Tell somebody it's time to live right. Colossians chapter 3, 8 and 10, the New Living Translation says, but now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, Melissa's behavior, uh -huh. slander, dirty language. Yes. Yeah. He says, don't lie to each other. For you have stripped off your old sinful nature. Notice he didn't say the Holy Spirit did. It says, you have done it. You. Wow. You wait for the Lord to do it. The Lord says, I gave you everything you need. Everything. So that you can do it. Yes. He says that you have stripped off your old sinful nature. And all its wicked deeds put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Today we are so busy stripping off our clothes bearing our flesh that as Christians we must strip off the flesh that bears our carnality. We're so busy showing our behind but not showing Christ. The spandex carry more weight than the word. You better wow. Jesus! Jesus! Hallelujah! J. 
James 3 and 13 declares, who is wise and have understanding among you, show it by your good life. You show it by your good life. That means we have to change our garments. The Holy Spirit has given us what we need. But we got to put it off. We got to strip this off. We can't do it without him, but we got to make a decision to do it with him. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on us. So how we live is going to be directly related to how we worship. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2 says this. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Verse 2 declares, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind, so that you may what? Discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You see, Paul is building in, in the book of Romans on a theme that he presented in chapter 6. So he says that the body, this carnal nature, used to be an instrument of sin. And therefore now, through the mercy and grace of God, I love it when he says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, indicating our need for his help, and a need for him to help us crucify this sinful nature so that we can offer up our affections, our desires, our attachments, our needs, our lusts, our, our unto the Lord as a sacrifice. In other words, give your life totally over to God. This is now your purpose. It is a daily sacrifice. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody think that I got there and did something to show you you really ain't where you thought you were uh, and you had to put it back on the altar? Anybody had to have a layaway presentations before the altar? I had to constantly put it on the altar. Some folk you had to constantly bring to the altar. You sat there and said, huh, woo, Monday, I'm all right. Then they did something Tuesday and you had to bring it back to the altar. Yeah. Amen. My wife said, I know what you're talking about because I live with him. <laughs> yes, I know. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> I was going to take you to IHOP. Now you're going to Waffle House. Amen. So the, in other words, give your life to me. Over to God. Amen. Desire not only a change in conduct, but a change in your nature. If your nature don't change, your conduct ain't going to change. Amen. We so busy trying to have our conduct change our nature instead of our nature change our conduct. Amen. And you can try to change your conduct all you want. That's called will worship. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. How many tried to say you're going to do something you did? How many say, I'm going to do, I'm not going to stop doing this and you do it? Uh -huh. Amen. All I got to do is say, anybody went on a diet? Yeah. Anybody said you're going to work out? Uh -huh. Amen. You, I mean, you was determined. Uh -huh. Amen. Minister John, he said he's going to be a vegan. Uh -huh. And we tried to break that brother down. Every time we go out to eat, we try to give him some pig foot, some hog moss, or we try to give him some steak. We say, we'll pay for it, John. Just get, but he get a chickpea with a little salt or something on a chickpea and a potato. And he ain't lost no weight. You got to change. You got to change your nature. Yeah. It's an admonishment from Paul uh -huh. that the force of transformed life is inclusive of complete reliance on God for transformation, yeah. Yeah. but not without accountability yeah. on our part to sacrifice what we really care about and what we really care about. How many know is ourselves? Uh -huh. So the first step to transformation. Is a death to self in order for us to live for Jesus Christ. Wow. And this is going to take a sacrifice. Giving to God what we want to keep for ourselves. And what we want to keep for ourselves is the rule and reign and sovereignty over our own life. When it's supposed to be him that has the rule, the reign, and sovereignty and mastery over every area of our lives. Paul declares that when we sacrifice to God what is dear to us, that we can begin intimacy with God. And this is a worship in spirit and truth. 
You see, transformation is not just a conformity to a standard of life, but it's a life of worship. And a life of worship is a life of self-denial because it removes us from the center of our lives uh, and it places God in his rightful place where, where God becomes the center of my narrative, not me, uh, the center of my narrative, not myself, uh, the center of my narrative, not I. It is giving, uh, it is serving, it, it is selfless. It, it places God first and foremost. Uh, and when we refuse to sacrifice self, uh, then our worship becomes idolatry. Because it shares the throne of our lives with God. And how many know that is not worship? Uh, we are to worship him alone. He's the only one worthy uh, of our complete devotion and exaltation and allegiance and affection. Uh, it's worship that really transforms us. Why? Because it allows the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit uh, to interfere with our selfish motives. It allows the healing of the Spirit to bind my broken pieces and broken places in my lives. It declares to God that I'm going to submit to the one who's greater than I. And I'm delighted to be in your presence. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. In your presence, there's liberty. In your presence, there's peace. In your presence, there's freedom. There's empowerment. In your presence, I am transformed and made new because he's made a difference in my life. So worship then is the secret to transformation. Somebody say it's transformational because we're created to worship. We're created to be intimate with God. He created us not in the pattern and the form of this world. That we are not to model the world's behavior, but we ought to be renewed. We ought to be transformed. A metamorphosis, a complete change in our life. Somebody say, I've been changed. But it's going to entail sacrifice. Sacrifice. How many know it takes humility? Because you got to stop thinking of yourself. Uh, and humility leads to submission. And submission leads to putting off the old man. And lead the sacrifice and the idols that we have made for ourselves, for the benefit of ourselves. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So we have to be transformed in how we live. Yes. We ought to be transformed in how we worship. Amen. And lastly, we ought to be transformed in how we train. Wow. Lord have mercy. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8 says, Do not waste time or arguing over godless ideas and old wise tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. In other words, Paul seems to be saying, stop wasting time with things that does not lift you up but try to confuse your faith. Paul is telling Timothy, it's going to take more than you just trying to be godly. It's going to be more than you hoping to live a godly life. It's going to be more than you having intentions to be godly. You must train to live a godly life. And godly life, then, is the measurement of the maturity of a transformed life. Just as you must train the body to do what it is capable of doing, and we even push our body to the limits, you must also train your spirit to do what it is capable of doing through the use of the spiritual disciplines, to the help of the Holy Spirit, uh, to help us get this unruly life, this carnal kind of nature under control, uh, and allow this new life in Jesus Christ to reign and rule over our life. Uh, you know why it is transformational? Because it's applicational. That means that there's some things that we got to do. Uh, matter of fact, Willard says the practice of the spiritual disciplines uh, is essential to the deliverance of the human being uh, from the concrete power of sin. And you might say, well, 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 how do we do this? Well, we have to train. Huh? And this is a few disciplines that we can apply. Huh? We got to read our Bible instead of being spoon-fed the Bible by everybody else but ourselves. Huh? We got to have meditation, which is the feeding of the heart. We have to have study, which is the feeding of the mind. We have to have prayer, huh? which is the intercourse of the soul. You wonder why you ain't got no power. Power ain't on a Sunday morning. Power is through intercession during the week in prayer. Somebody say amen. What are some of the disciplines we train ourselves with is fasting, which is a sacrifice of what feeds and leads me. Worship is the sensitivity to the supernatural. Serving is a crucifixion of selfishness. And we have to evangelize and reproduce. This is a sign that our hearts are becoming sensitive to the heart of God because it desires to give our very best 
best to somebody else. Uh, and who's that better the best? It's Jesus Christ in our lives. Uh, we want them to be free. Uh, we want them to be healed. Uh, we want them to be holy. Uh, we want them to have eternal life. Uh, that is what we do. That's what transformation looks like. Matter of fact, Paul goes on and tells us that a transformed life is a filled life. Wow. Ephesians 5 and 18 says, do not be drunk with wine, but be what? Filled, filled with the Holy Spirit. He's talking to the believer because there's one baptism. Amen. There's one Lord. When you gave your life to Christ, you've been baptized in the Spirit, but filling is for the believer already in the Spirit. Amen. And the reason why we say that, when you look at the Greek word for fill, it means continuous. Amen. That means it's not a one-time event. Every day, I got to say, Lord, help me with me. Yeah. But, uh, because fill is not just receiving the anointing. Fill is your yielded to the leading of the Holy Spirit that gives the anointing. It means I am surrendering my way for his way in my life. It means that more of his will is in me than my will that fights against his. It means that I am now, as he gave me in baptism, all of himself to me and filling, I'm giving all myself to him. Some of y'all don't know, you know, before Christ, uh -huh. some of y'all might have a few drinks or two. Some of you are drinking that, but some of you right now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I have heard, and in my prior life, I have experienced that when I was drinking, I was a different person when I was not. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. See, I'm talking about myself because none of y'all know what I'm talking about. But I have seen people who are drunk act quite differently than when they were not. Yes, sir. I've also learned that never ask a drunk man what they really think because a drunk man is the most truthful person on earth. What he would have tact in not saying, he won't have no tact when he's drunk. Don't you ever ask a drunk man, do you look fat in that dress? And you know you did and don't expect him to tell you the truth. Just like we can act a fool when we drunk. When we're drunk with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit does something differently without the sin. He changes you into who you never have been before. Hallelujah. Because now I'm not drunk with the world. I'm drunk with the Holy Spirit. So I'm now somebody I've never been before. Because I'm changed. But you got to you got to live it out. Yes. You got to worship. worship. Uh -huh. And you got to train. Mm -hmm. This is how you make it measurable. Mm -hmm. It's more than a shout. Mm -hmm. It's more than a clap. Mm -hmm. And it's more than a dance. Yes, it it's more than a bow down. Mm -hmm. But true worship is I'm bowing down my spirit to submit to his. True dancing is I'm dancing even over the small victories that I have for things that still trying to have hold of me. Amen. True clapping is I am proclaiming that my God is real. Amen. And I'm going to live for him. And then I'm going to take these things that God has given me. Things that he has practiced himself in the word of God. The spiritual disciplines. And do the help and the grace of the Holy Spirit. I tell the old man hit the road Jack. I ain't never coming back. No more, no more. No more, no more. You got to understand your true worship is your eviction notice. Son, to tell the old man you don't live here no more. Amen. Your, your, your word of God is your documents, your deeds. That, that you know what? You got to go because you are no longer on the title. You are no longer on the deed. And don't worry how I'm going to pay for it. It's already paid in full. There's a new owner of the house and he told me to put you out. I was comfortable living with you. We had some good times together. But living with you is killing me. Uh -huh. Woo, Jesus. Living with you is bringing me down. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
You see, this word ain't for you just to get one message and then you go on and, like James says, look in the mirror and forget what you look like. Uh -huh. This is so, not to harm you, but to help you. Yeah. Holiness is never meant to harm you, but it's meant to help you. Some of the stuff we walk in into is because we walked out of holiness. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Some of the pits that we fell into, you can climb out and do holiness. holiness. Take it wherever you are. Ain't nobody perfect except my wife, amen? I had to clean up everything I done said, so I'm gonna clean it up. Ain't nobody perfect. When you look at the word perfect in the word of God, it means to be mature. I got to be mature. I gotta walk out of this. Come on, brothers, I'm getting ready to close. I talked about a new relationship. Do you really know what you have? I talked about a new thinking. How do we make decisions? How do we know how to navigate this life? I, I talked about a new being. Do you know who you are and who you belong to? And today, we put it all together. It got to look like something. It got to look like him. And I got to do some things. I got to strip off. I got to put off. I got to count as dead. All those things are still trying to hold on to me. Amen. It's very difficult to walk forward while you're looking back. Amen. When you're looking back trying to walk forward, you're blind to what's ahead of you. And a lot of times we're so concerned about what we're giving up, what we're sacrificing. You really don't know what you're getting in return. What you're getting in return is him. And in him comes all the blessings. Stop looking for the blessings along with him, but look to him and get the blessings might be someone here today hallelujah Jesus whether you're here whether you're on Facebook live you got to step out of some things I got to put off some things some of you might have to some of us might have to change our garments I'm talking to believers today I'm preparing us for communion for next week I got to put off I got to change my mind and walk in the newness of life. I'm not going to look at anybody else. I'm looking at me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Help me. Help me walk out of things that try to define me. Help me. Help my, help, help my mouth. Help my thoughts. Help my living. Help me crucify the things in me that don't want the things in you. There's some things in me, Lord, I'm going to be honest, don't really want the things in you. I love you, but that's a tough one. You see, you don't sacrifice something you ain't spent time with. A sacrifice means you're giving up something you don't really want to give. Lord, help me grow closer in my living for you. Lord, help me see your ways to, or to protect me and, and not to deny me. Help me embrace your grace to live in a manner that will be pleasing unto you. Why don't we stand here in the sanctuary and where you at, if you are and you're watching on Facebook Live, just lift your hands, Lord, say, says, help. I'm still trying. I can't try on my own, but that's why I'm saying help. Help more of your glory be reflective in my life. And Lord, if I'm struggling, help! If I'm wavering, help! Hey, hey! Lord, help me climb out of what I myself fell into. I got an addiction to things. I got an addiction to people. I got addictions of addictions to things. Hallelujah, Jesus. That not allowing me to walk in my full potential of who I am. But today, I strip it off. I got to get free. Holiness got to be more than me. I'm caught. I want to walk in it. And yes, I might slip. Maybe tomorrow, maybe by this evening. But God, I'm going to get back up and say that you're more worth it to me than anything I'm holding on to. You see, worship is not just in the church. Worship ain't just because you said hallelujah. Worship is saying that you mean more to me than anything else that I'm holding on to. I got to have a new way to live. If that's your testimony, we're going to pray. Father, fill. 
Father, strengthen. Father, forgive. Father, help. Father, break the stronghold. Father, break the yoke. Father, change the mind. Father, heal the broken pieces. Father, we renounce and rebuke negative thoughts. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we rebuke the enemy lies. We rebuke his hold. We rebuke his treasures. We rebuke, Lord God, his temptations. God, you said you'll keep us from it. God, you said you'll make a way of escape. Lord God, we ain't gonna take the phone call. Lord God, we ain't gonna walk over there. Lord God, we ain't gonna watch that. Lord God, we ain't gonna end the course with this. Help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, we can't do it. I tried, I'm ashamed, but I can't do it. I'll like, give it up to you. God, you're my father. You won't leave me. You won't forsake me. You won't look down on me. I don't know what to do. I need wisdom. Help me in the name of the Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord, for trying to please people. Help me, Lord Jesus, for trying to fit in their mold. Help me, Lord Jesus, for trying to wear garments that don't fit me no more. That is out of season. I'm, I'm moving into a new season in my life. I'm moving into a new level. Help me climb out. Help me. Help me to have more than a religion but a relationship. Help me to love you, dear. I need to love you more. 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 Help me to get out of my comfort zone. Help me to break the mold that I've been in. My God. Somebody say help. Amen. If you're watching on Facebook Live, this would help. And if somebody might be watching the same. I need a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help me. Hallelujah, Jesus, deliver me. Oh, Lord, help me, Lord. And deliver me. If you're here and you're watching, the Lord wants you to come. You can't have a new life without the new life living in you, and that new life is in him. He just wants you to come help you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to heal you. Stop worrying about what you look like. We all jacked up in a way. We all messed up in a way. Amen. But we all need him. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, that God is risen from the dead, you shall be saved. He says that everybody who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He said, therefore, there's no condemnation of those in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's what he says. He said, the wages of death is sin, but the free gift of eternal life is in Jesus Christ. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of the God. Amen. All of us. All of us. And he wants you just the way you are. Just the way you are. He's not calling you to Christianity. He's calling you to Christ. That's right. So if you're here today or you're on Facebook Live, just say this with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me whole. Live inside of me. Jesus, forgive me my sins. Give me your spirit to help me live like you. Be my Lord. Be my master. Be my savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you have said that for the very first time, then we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would put in the chat box. If you're here today, you can just come to the altar. Amen. And we will receive you and pray for you. If you need a church home, if you need a place to grow. As you see, we, we preach the whole counsel of God's word here. There are going to be days you love it and days you ain't. Amen. Hallelujah. Then, but, and, <laughs> the word is going to challenge all of us. This is a word church. This is a church that believes in sanctification. Amen. We pursue it. And we are a church that believes in the miracle working power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because we believe right theology, right living leads to right power. Amen. I believe God is still a miracle worker. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I still believe God delivers. I still believe God heals. But we got to be set up for it to happen. We are the conduit in which it comes from. So if we're unclean, then we only receive, we're like a pipe. Where the pipe is so corroded, only a little bit gets through. But if you open up the pipe, then the flow, the flow, the flow. I don't know about you. I want to be in the flow of God. I don't want to be in the practice of church. I want to be in the flow. Amen. I want to be around with a flow. It just every time I come, I'm drunk with more. 
of his spirit. Uh, hallelujah. And I, I, I want somebody to say, what happened to you this weekend? I want to be able to come home. I, I'm tired because of the Holy Spirit, the weight of the Holy Spirit. And I want to see people here. I want to see people that have been hooked on drugs for 25 years coming and God just whack. I, I, I want to see it. I want to see people who's in bondage to all types of natural and spiritual things. We the limit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Well, if that's it, this is the Ignite Church of Atlanta. And it's not something that we're talking about. It's something in our ministry we have seen. We ain't new to this. We true to this. So whether it's in person or whether it's virtual, we are the church. And if you're looking for a church home, I have to say this is a good place. Amen. Amen. If you're on Facebook Live and you say, hey, I want to be a part of this, just text and tap and we will come and we reach out to you. If you're in the sanctuary, all you got to do is come forward and we will we will introduce you. Amen. Hallelujah. To the Ignite Church of Atlanta. God bless you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Y'all work the brother today. Not always talking about holiness, because a lot of times we don't want to hear it. But we're going to keep hearing it because that's the nature of God. And that's going to help deliver us out of the things we are bondage in. Amen. Just look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you was here. I'm glad to worship with you this morning, this afternoon. Amen. Put on the Facebook Live. I'm glad that you was here. Amen. I'm going to ask Pastor Val to come close us out in the benediction. Amen. Remember the Brown Bag Initiative. Amen. If I know some, some of you who might not you want to give some things, if you want to bring some things on Sunday morning while we're in service from 10 to 12, Amen. You can do that. If you want to give some monetary gifts, we'll pick up the supplies that is needed for our community. Without our community, amen, right? The other, other week, and we got to meet a lot of our neighbors. Amen. And it was just a blessing. Amen. Our evangelist Doris came with us, and uh, Minister John had our Ignite kids. He was blessing somebody. That's what we're about. Don't worry about how large you are to do big things. Do you hear what I'm saying? We like to get large and then we want to do big things. No, you start big things now because if the Lord can trust you with the small things, y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Baby, you look good today, girl. You know it? Amen. And let's see how long you last in that shoe. Amen. In the minute you say amen, amen. Don't she look good? Isn't she wonderful? Oh, ha, 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 ha.